Okay, good morning everyone. Thank you for joining us for the announcement of the Yukon Tourism Relief and Recovery Plan. My name is Cameron Weber with the Department of Tourism and Culture. I'll be moderating today's live stream. Uh, Edvin Beniat will be providing French translation and closed captioning is available as well. There's a link in the description. Uh, this morning's announcement will be presented by the Minister of Tourism and Culture, Jeannie McLean. She is joined by Neil Hartling, Chair of the Tourism Industry Association of Yukon, and Denny Kobayashi, Chair of the Yukon Tourism Advisory Board. <coughs> Following this morning's remarks, we will go to the phone lines for questions from reporters. Reporters will be called on by name and will each have two questions. Before we begin, I would just like to verify that everyone can hear us. Uh, if any reporters are having a problem, please email ecoinfo at gov.yk.ca. And with that, Minister McLean, over to you. Great. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here today with you on the traditional territory of the Kwan Dun First Nation and the Ta'ong Kwachan Council to uh, speak to you about tourism. Yukon's tourism industry has been dramatically impacted by the near complete shutdown of international, domestic, and local travel due to COVID-19. Without government support and leadership, a, a downturn of this scale would lead to a critical loss to the tourism industry of skilled human capital, entrepreneurship, and infrastructure. Tourism infrastructure, such as hotels, can also be critical for the health of many of our economic sectors. The Tourism Relief and Recovery Plan is an investment of up to 15 million over the next three years to fulfill 19 targeted actions that are based on research, industry feedback, and the vision, values, goals, and pillars of the Yukon Tourism Development Strategy. Yukon's Tourism Relief and Recovery Plan is centered on four themes, providing tourism sector leadership, rebuilding confidence and capabilities for tourism, supporting the recovery of tourism industry operators, and refining the brand and inspiring travelers to visit. Because of the fluid and responsive nature of the plan and the work still in progress with our stakeholders as we move forward with implementation, I'm focusing today on the financial initiatives that will begin this fiscal year. I recently announced three new relief programs totaling four million for the current fiscal year. The accommodation sector, the tourism non-accommodation sector, and the culture and tourism nonprofits. Sorry. With today's release of the Tourism Relief and Recovery Plan, I'm pleased to announce five new recovery initiatives that will also begin this fiscal year. The first is supporting industry in the adoption of standardized safe travel protocols. Through this initiative, we will support the Tourism Industry Association of Yukon to adopt standardized safe travel protocols for the protection of visitors and residents. We know that maintaining a healthy tourism sector will not come um, at a cost of protecting the health and safety of Yukoners. Through these protocols, we will ensure residents and travelers have confidence that the necessary precautions are being taken by our business community. The next key initiative involves rebuilding resident support for tourism. We know that the fear of importing COVID-19 to Yukon made some residents hesitant uh, to welcome visitors in the territory, especially in Yukon communities. We will partner with the industry to conduct research and address concerns by developing and implementing a, re a resident and community support for tourism strategy. The next initiative is a one window approach for our industry partners to access these supports and services. This is a priority action identified by the Yukon Tourism Advisory Board. To this end, we will we are funding the development and implementation of concierge services with our partners to assist businesses in navigating and optimizing government funding supports for tourism businesses and organizations, providing more coordinated and consistent government response to industry needs. Finally, we will begin to invest in the development of a recovery-specific place brand for Yukon as a whole. 
The new branding will articulate what Yukon means to us. And the story we want, or sorry, and what story we as a territory will tell those who want to visit, invest, do business, and live here. This initiative involves a community engagement process with businesses, communities, residents, and governments to identify and confirm the qualities that make Yukon truly special and unique, and the things we, we should celebrate, protect, and promote. We will utilize the resulting marketing and communication tools to raise the awareness of Yukon as a destination and attract visitors, but also to promote our exports, attract investment capital, and build our skilled workforce. Envisioned as a shared public asset for the entire territory, a Yukon Place brand will not only contribute to Yukon's recovery from the pandemic and grow our economy, but it will also bind us together through collective expression of what makes Yukon so special. The Tourism Relief and Recovery Plan sets out the overall approach to reaching a state of full recovery for the tourism sector and will guide our relief and recovery efforts going forward. <coughs> this plan includes support for relief as well as recovery and an overall strengthening of Yukon's tourism sector in a way that is safe and economically viable, leading to a more resilient sector for the future. This is truly an investment, not an expense. By bringing the tourism industry back to full operating capacity earlier, the net economic benefits to Yukoners will be substantial. As we have seen, the pandemic landscape will also will have ebbs and flows, and this plan is designed to allow us to shift back and forth from relief to recovery over the coming months. The Government of Yukon will continue to engage with the Yukon Tourism Advisory Board, the Tourism Industry Association of Yukon, tourism businesses, non-profit organizations, and other partners to implement these initiatives in a way that responds to, in a way that responds to industry's needs. I want to emphasize this plan is a partnership. The leadership shown by the Tourism Industry Association of Yukon and its, con and its constituent organizations and by the Yukon Tourism Advisory Board has been steadfast it has, and has been a major contributor to this plan. It is hard to overstate how badly the pandemic has hurt our dynamic, resilient tourism industry. The last 10 months have been really dark times, but the resolve shown by Taya's leadership and the Yukon Tourism Advisory Board and other industry leaders has been inspiring. Therefore, I'm very pleased to share this announcement um, with Tourism Industry Association Chair Neil Hartling and Yukon Tourism Advisory Board Chair Denny Kobayashi. Thank you to both of you for your tireless advocacy and, um, and the work that you've done on behalf of our industry. Um, Destination Canada estimates, estimates indicate that it could take uh, the Canadian tourism sector up to five years to recover. With the Yukon Tourism Development Strategy as our foundation for a long-term, sustainable, profitable industry and the Tourism Relief and Recovery Plan as our guide out of co the COVID-19 pandemic, our goal is to return to the 2019 levels of tourism employment and revenue in Yukon within three years. Yukon government is committed to extraordinary measures to ensure the survival and recovery of one of the most important drivers in our Yukon's economy. Yukon's tourism industry is strong, creative and resilient. I know that by supporting business relief and by following the plan, we will again be able to welcome the world. So thank you. I'll turn it over to my, my friend, Neil Hartling. Thank you, Minister McLean. Yukon tourism sector is one of the hardest hit by COVID-19, with over 400 companies and 4,000 employees. Yukon's $15 million tourism relief and recovery plan shows government recognition of the value and important contributions of the tourism sector and its commitment to stabilizing and rebuilding. It's a small investment that will yield 
big dividends for Yukon's economy. We are pleased to see our industry's situation well represented in this plan, as well as recognition of the continued need for engagement with the tourism sector and other partners throughout the development and implementation as this pandemic evolves. We know that maintaining a healthy tourism sector must not come at the cost of protecting the health and safety of Yukoners, and we're proud to be leading the development and adoption of industry-wide health and safety protocols to ensure both resident and client support. The Tourism Relief and Recovery Plan Strategic Investment in Tourism Business Relief and in Long-Term Recovery will enable the, this critical economic sector to survive the pandemic and emerge stronger and more resilient than ever. TIA Yukon will continue to help inform government's relief and response efforts. We're confident that with this plan, Yukon's tourism industry will recover more quickly and we will once again welcome the world to our home. Thanks, and I'll turn it over now to Denny Kobayashi, who's the chair of our Yukon Tourism Advisory Board. Thank you. Minister, well, we'd like to start on behalf of the Yukon Tourism Advisory Board. We'd like to acknowledge and recognize that we're we're here today on the traditional lands of the uh, Ton Quachin Council and the Kwanlin Dun First Nation. Uh, Minister McLean and our media friends, it is my pleasure to be here today for the release of Yukon's Tourism Relief and Recovery Plan. I am here in my capacity as the independent chair of the Yukon Tourism Advisory Board. One of the board's principal mandates is to monitor the Yukon Tourism Development Strategy to ensure that it remains relevant and takes into account the evolving nature of the industry locally, nationally, and internationally. The board also provides advice to Minister McLean on how to achieve industry-government alignment in the implementation of the strategy in a manner that maximizes opportunities to enhance the sustainability of Yukon's tourism industry. Our, boy, our board was appointed in March of this year, and out of the gate, Minister McLean called me and said, Denny, we really need the advisory board to focus on uh, the relief and recovery programs as COVID had, had come and was impacting our industry already. So we, our, our board immediately shifted from the tourism, Yukon Tourism Development Strategy to look at the programs and talk to our industry and determine what they were needed as they were facing the impacts of the COVID pandemic. The board has worked diligently since that time to inform government's relief and response efforts, including being engaged to provide input to the tourism relief and recovery plan that is being released today. Amongst our initial recommendations was that the health and safety of visitors and Yukon residents be added as a core value to the Yukon Tourism Development Strategy, which the Minister has wholeheartedly supported. The Board has confirmed with the Minister that a one-government approach is more important than ever as Yukon's tourism industry prepares for the transition from relief to recovery. The majority of our Board members, by the way, own and operate their own tourism businesses, and as such, they are very aware of the dire circumstances that many businesses are facing as the impacts of COVID on the tourism industry are prolonged. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the members of the board, Neil Hartling is one of the members of our board, um, for their passion, commitment, and incredible amount of time and energy they have given in the service of Yukon's tourism in industry over the last several months. The support that the board has received from Minister McLean, Deputy Minister Val Royal, and her tourism team at Tourism Yukon is appreciated and valued by our board. Thank you, thank you both. Uh, the Yukon Tourism Advisory Board fully supports the tourism relief and recovery plan being released today. Yukon's tourism development strategy, relief response, and recovery planning are being heralded across the industry as leading the nation. We are confident that this plan and Yukon's tourism industry will recover more quickly and will once again welcome the world to our Yukon. Thank you very much, Minister McLean. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you all. Um, and now we'll go to the reporters for questions uh, in the order they called in. So we have first up Luke from CKRW. Luke, go ahead. 
Yes, I was wondering if there's a uh, if there's a specific timeline for implementation of this plan and how that would look. Yes, um, the, the relief and recovery plan is a three-year plan. So the, the announcements that we made today, the specific announcements will be for um, this fiscal year. So um, that they'll, they'll start this fiscal year, but the plan will go out two, two more years after that for the relief and recovery. But the tourism development strategy where many of these initiatives and uh, actions were taken from is a 10-year strategy. Strategy. And Luke, was there a follow up? Okay. Um, we'll move over to Philip from CBC Yukon. Philip, go ahead. I think we've lost people. Okay. Uh, let's try Shona Fem. Doug, are you there? Maybe we've lost connection with them. Could be some technical difficulties. We try Claudienne from Radio Canada. We oui, uh, yes. Um, so I, I'm going to ask a big question. Uh, vaccination is starting across mm -hmm. the country. Could we see a return of tourists this summer? And where could they be coming from? And how much of a tourism season can uh, people expect? We um, are will continue to work with our chief medical officer around um, the um, border restrictions and the current state of emergency. We renewed our state of emergency um, just last week, so uh, that remains in place. Um, again, we'll continue to work with Dr. Brendan Hanley around um, his recommendations and then we'll take the recommendations and, and work within government to, to make those necessary um, decisions. Um, we're early stage in terms of, um, we had great news last week in terms of the vaccines and where we're at and how Yukon's um, situated within the, the release of the vaccines, but there's still a long road ahead and we'll continue, as, as I've stated, to work with uh, Dr. Brendan Hanley around um, our safe reopening plan for Yukon. Follow up, Claudia? And, and perhaps the other guests can can weigh in. Um, mm -hmm. Is that to say, and do we have an idea of just how long the tourism industry might take to recover from the, this past these past months? Well, in terms of uh, recovery time, I think the good news is that the Yukon is very well positioned um, internationally at this point in time for uh, a strong recovery. Uh, our what we have to offer is in higher demand than ever. Uh, the uh, wide open, uh, clean. Uh, uh, pristine spaces are in great demand and uh, it's exactly the sort of tonic that a post-COVID world is going to be seeking out and uh, so we're we're looking forward and all indications from uh, industry uh, uh, businesses tourism industry businesses is that um, uh, where we should see um, a, a relatively fast recovery mm -hmm. Did you want to add, Denny? Or? Um, the only thing, the Yukon Tourism Advisory Board, who we talk to are industry operators within the within the Yukon. So what we will do as a board, and our members are from across the Yukon and across different sectors, is we talk directly to tourism operators in the Yukon and see what they're experiencing, what their projections are, what they're seeing with their cus customers. We consolidate and bring that information back to our board and out of that we'll formulate recommendations to the minister. So we're, we're driven by what our industry wants, uh, wants us to, to pass on to, to mm -hmm. Minister McLean. 
Mm-hmm. I, um, you know, in terms of recovery, um, this is a three-year plan. Uh, Destination Canada estimates that, as I've said in my opening statements, that um, travel will, it'll take four to five years for the tourism sector to recover. And with our plan, and because we had the tourism development strategy in place that was a new plan from 2018, it really is a foundational document that um, we worked on collectively. So it's a whole of Yukon uh, tourism development strategy. It's not a Yukon, only Yukon government, but it's become our, I mean, it's a a working document. It's been uh, the, again, I think we're the envy of the country and now um, drawing out of that uh, tourism development strategy, we've, we've drawn out a number of actions that were in that strategy already. So we're enacting them and under the advice of, of our uh, Tourism Advisory Board and uh, the Tourism Association of Yukon. And um, again, we will, our plan is to come back within three years to return to the 2019 um, visitation and, and tourism revenue that we had in that year. And uh, we haven't adjusted our goal around um, the goal of doubling revenue attributable to tourism over the next 10 years. We've kept that goal in place because we believe we can get back to that. Okay, um, I guess, should we try Luke and, okay, let's, uh, Luke from CKRW, are you there? Uh, yeah, sorry, I lost connection there. I don't have any more questions. <laughs> okay, uh, Philippe from CBC Yukon. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, Peace and Recovery Fund accounts for $15 million of investment. Is that now all allocated, or will there be more precision later about where the $15 million is spent? Yeah, um, we've made the investment of up to $15 million, and um, up to now we've um, allocated $4 million that will go to relief. And that with today's announcement and these initiatives for this fiscal year, we're um, uh, allocating 450000 towards these initiatives, and we'll continue to work with our partners, we'll continue to work um, with uh, within our department to allocate the additional dollars and um, we uh, will yeah it's it's an exciting announcement today I, I you know we've um, really focused quickly on the relief programs and and now we're getting into the recovery and I think the timing you know with um, as the other questions came earlier about the the vaccine and you know people starting to think about travel again and uh, so I, I think you know these these announcements today I mean we've been working closely with our partners to to ensure that um, we have a good partnership going forward and that we're sharing the responsibility and really that is the the foundation of the um, Yukon tourism development strategy it was completely done in, in partnership and I think you will continue to hear and see us um, uh, move forward with the actions within this plan in partnership do you want to add that? Philip, was there a follow-up question? Uh, yes, please. Uh, in Australia, we've seen the concept of a vaccine passport. It was mentioned by um, a CEO of Qantas Airlines in the news, this idea that people would be free to visit only with the requirement of having been vaccinated. Would we consider mm-hmm. that in Yukon? Uh, that's a good question. Thank you for that. Again, we'll um, take. We'll be having a lot of conversations going forward, in, in terms of what that looks like for for um, Yukon, and we'll continue again to work with our chief medical officer around recommendations um, to keep Yukoners safe. I mean, I think you know that that's been our 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 focus all along, and we know that 
by keeping Yukoners safe, we really, the, the tourism uh, sector has been very impacted by that because of the lack of uh, visitation that's allowed right now. So we'll continue to work um, with uh, Dr. Bryden and Hanley um, and with our safe reopening plan and um, a lot of discussions to come. But I would like to maybe ask uh, Neil to talk about the safe travel um, uh, program that we're announcing today and the partnership that we're entering into with, with Taya and this program. Yes, um, uh, Taya has, and uh, along with um, Yukon Tourism is embracing the um, w, uh, WCTT um, uh, standard um, of, uh, health safe uh, travel program and um, we've um, it's a, one of the best practices recognized in the industry around the world in terms of um, uh, indicating to the traveling public that our operators are adhering to um, the best standards and, uh, and in fact, striving to be innovative to, uh, to even uh, increase those. And so we're proud to see the um, Yukon tourism industry out front uh, embracing those standards. And uh, Denny, um, maybe you may want to, uh, part of one of the, the considerations that um, I asked the Yukon Tourism Advisory Board was to go back and look at the tourism development strategy and you had recommended or the board recommended an additional value to be added to, to the tourism strategy and maybe you might want to just talk about that a bit. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Minister McLean. Early on, when the board was looking at the tourism development strategy, the, the first thing that came to light was that strategy in its entirety was still relevant in spite of COVID being here. The strategies were solid, they were re relevant still. Some of the timing might have to be adjusted and some of the priorities might have to be tweaked. But the one gap we saw, and we heard this from Yukoners, we heard it from Yukon communities who are represented on our board, we heard it from Yukon First, First Nations and a lot of Yukoners that safety was really important to them. More importantly, we heard from Yukon tourism operators that the safety of their families and the safety of their guests was critical to their success as well. So thus, we wanted to add the value on the core part of the strategy of making sure that safety of visitors and Yukoners was a core part of that strategy moving forward. And that mm -hmm. was the uh, amendment that we put forward for the minister's consideration, which she uh, heartily approved. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Um, and I think that, yeah, there, I mean, again, all of these are, you know, getting folks ready to to um, travel to Yukon again, and as the strategy un unfolds, we'll see a lot more um, that will will be a result of this plan, but also building resident support for tourism. Um, it's 2.2 and 2.3 within the the plan, and and I think that it it ties into the question that was just asked in in terms of um, we had a very high. Uh, satisfaction from residents coming into COVID around 94% in fact. So, um, and we know that there's a lot of fear of importing COVID-19 to Yukon um, and and residents are ha have been hesitant um, even during the opening of the BC bubble. And um, so I think this question ties into that um, initiative that we're announcing today as well, rebuilding resident support for tourism. And again, um, we'll be working with our partners around this in terms of doing the research and, and developing a strategy. So I'm not sure if you want to speak to that as well, Neil. Sure. Um, uh, the Yukon's uh, uh, Tourism Industry Association uh, is undertaking a um, uh, support um, uh, survey and uh, resident sentiment support survey and um, and uh, plan so that uh, we can ensure that our actions moving forward um, show that um, we're melding our best practices and communicating them uh, as as strongly as possible to uh, to give the community confidence that um, we are um, we know that maintaining a healthy tourism sector must not come at the cost of protecting the health and safety of uh, Yukoners. And uh, we're proud to be leading the development and adoption of uh, 
uh, industry-wide health and safety protocols to ensure both resident and client support. Great. Thank you. Okay. Do we have uh, Doug from Shown FM on the line still? Doesn't sound like it. Okay, well, that will conclude this morning's live stream. Uh, I want to thank Minister McLean, Mr. Hartling, and Mr. Kobayashi for their time today and their remarks. Uh, the Tourism Relief and Recovery Plan is now available on yukon.ca. Thanks mm -hmm. to everyone for joining us today. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. I'll just say thank you to our partners again, Neil and Denny, and the tourism and culture staff, and for all of the, the hard work. It's been a long road. Um, I do want to say that this plan certainly has um, it has been a, a work in progress for the really for the last ten months. Considering how will we come back? What will that look like? And so I, I really um, thank you very much for all of your 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 work on this, and also to the Department of um, Economic Development for all of the hard work that they put into um, working. Uh, um, we of course we worked alongside them, but all the relief programs, the Yukon Business Relief Program. Um, and and other initiatives that were led by economic development initially, and so I just really want to say thank you um, for all of, all of the work. And we still have a long road ahead of us, but we will get there together in partnership. So thank you.